And just like that, we found Pilgrim's Rest. Oh. So, here's the crux of my troubles. To accomplish anything, I need to work with other people. I need assistance, I need workers, I need hands. As we work together, they inevitably ask questions, and I can never help talking. It starts with innocently. It starts innocently, though. They want to understand how someone who believes in science can also believe in the divine, or they have their own misunderstanding instilled by some borderline religious remnant. My weakness is my inability to let alone. I want them to understand, so I try, gently as I might, to nudge their minds along the right path. Then there are follow-ups and followings. The trouble is that I genuinely care for these people. It would be much less easier. It would be. <laughs> it would be much easier if I didn't. All right, so that's writing number two. Pokeweed. All right, this place has been abandoned for, for a little while. There's all sorts of stuff. This is writing three. Today, in a soft voice, my assistant asked me if there was anything about the unity. It was all I could do to keep from shouting that I could scarcely comprehend the misunderstanding that would lead to such a question. It was asked honestly, and I answered as best as I could. But if even my closest confidant here can fail to grasp the most basic of these truths, why am I bothering to explain any of it to any of them? Every word that drops from my mouth gets gobbled up misheard, misremembered, misunderstood, and mistranslated before I can issue the slightest clarification. People are necessary, but people are madness. Yes, I think that I think he's right. I attempted to withdraw to go off alone to commune with the unity in my own way. They followed. Of course they followed. Boy, he's he's getting upset here, isn't he? I don't know why I took a blue lab outfit, but whatever. All right, this is writing number four. At least a bit of peace, a piece of peace. Is that anything? Is that funny? Why am I trying to be funny? Have they driven me mad at last? Is there a difference between writing to myself and talking to myself? The former certainly seems more acceptable than the latter. I recall again that my mind is my own and that even if only it exists, that it is sufficient for me to believe in everything else. The unity has restored me once more. This time I act alone, for now. Myself is a formidable opponent. I should have expected as much, but vanity is thankfully not among my vices. Regardless, it turns out time spent in solitude is, in my case, time with a very sick man, or whatever it is I've become. I don't like this person. Well, at least he recognizes that he's, you know, going mad. Seems like an awfully large case for some coolant. Wonder how old that hamburger is. It's synthesized, so it probably doesn't matter. Writing number one. The credulous simplicity of mundane humans never ceases to amaze me. My worst instincts, the evil spirit, draw me towards a form of contempt for them, but I remember that I am privy to that which they are not. I cannot and should not judge them for a lack of vision when I know very well the blinders which obscure their sight. I once wore them myself, after all. I hope for their sake that they may some day understand, but for my sake I wish to be left alone.
This is probably so old. It probably is grown. Oh, it's like octopus tentacles. That's so weird. Alien still. Those alive? Huh. Writing number five. Boy, we are all out of order with these. <clears throat> Ooh, that's a long one. I find myself thinking about his various pasts and my possible futures. I imagine continuing on the road, acquiring more power, more knowledge, more development of myself. I imagine passing through once more to another world to begin the process anew. Uh... What is notable here, that road does not seem gratifying. Every step is one of intrinsic reward, and I feel myself anticipating the pleasures in seeing a more contented version of myself in the future. Then for the sake of considering all possibilities, I imagine if I took a different path, if I stopped running, stopped seeking to gather my own power, if I instead embraced the twinges of compassion I feel in my heart, and let myself care for the people who seem to gather about me when, wherever I try to work. If I simply lived and taught and perhaps brought others to the light and died. That road also seems gratifying. I also see a contented version of myself in that future. Here is the difference, though. When I stop thinking about the glories I could achieve for myself, the pleasure fades nearly immediately. When I stop thinking about staying and building something, the feeling endures. There is something more sustaining about it, more fulfilling. I don't know what this difference signifies, but I am grateful for the time I've taken to notice it. Oh, I don't know about this guy. Sorry, I meant to read that out loud. But basically the code to get in the room is basically all of the writings that you've just read. So pay attention to what you read and basically just answer answer those questions as if um yeah. Go oh, check us out. Huh. That's the first one of those I've seen. Sweet. Turkey, yum yum. It's gonna be gross. I feel like there's so much junk in here, it's just so easy to overlook. I don't know why I would think he's, he's got digi picks. That's like the one thing I want everywhere I go. All right, Pilgrim's final writing. I don't know what the correct answer is. I might never. Increasingly, though, I am comfortable with not knowing. The more I reflect on being here in this world, in this time, the more I think it is precisely where I need to be. This time will be different. It won't be about me, so I won't have to run. I can actually build something with intent instead of scrambling to fix something that others create in my name. Yeah, I hear my cat, but it's the mic's not picking it up, so I'm, I'm really glad she's really loud. <laughs> I'm leaving behind that other person. This world has no place for him. Let him die. Let me live to enlighten the blessed universe before me. You have found the end of my journey, but to know everything, you must find its beginning. On Hyla 2, the island hides the scorpion, and the scorpion's sting hides the truth. Um, that sounds awesomely painful. before. You told me that fun was important. I assumed you were joking and dismissed it out of hand. 
But, having thought about it, I wonder now if you were right. Or at least, if I were too quick to reject the idea. I have been single-minded in my pursuits. I have always believed the decisions I made were necessary. That there was no other option. I have sacrificed much to be where I am now. And... I'm starting to wonder if it has been worth it. I know. I have told you that I am not one to discuss my past. And yet... Do you keep bringing up your past? <laughs> No, that is not what I'm trying to say. I... promised to provide for my family. That meant working with smugglers to procure supplies we could not acquire any other way. I have spent my adult life away from my home. Jumping from one planet to the next. This we Living knew. in dangerous conditions, often surrounded by violence. It certainly influenced the way I see the universe. I was convinced from the beginning that it was unwise to let anyone get too close. I had, maybe not quite friends, but people I cared about. Yet there was always a distance I could not reach across. I often find other people complicated and confusing. It seemed easier to not become attached, especially when circumstances meant I, I might never see them again, with no warning. Until now, I have disagreed strongly with that idea, but therein lies my concern. What I am trying to say is that I now wonder whether it has been the right decision to distance myself from others. I appreciate that more than you know. Oh, back to the mission. Let's go. That looks like a big ass gun. Let's just put that on my ship, okay? Ooh, a pear. I like pears. door when it opens the sound goes so far over to my left that it sounds like our my door over here opening which is kind of freaky because ain't nobody here oh look another pair and a line Just making sure. Oh. 
Check out the shotgun, you guys. That's fine, it'll do. It holds more than two. Which was kind of an issue for me before. Why not? Little beer never hurt anybody. Get it together, people. You just, you just chill. I got this. Ain't gonna be nobody in here. Oh my. Oh, did you pick? That it? That's it. Okay, so we go outside. the Razorback. Those are worth a little bit of money. Anything. Maybe I could just sell it. Uh, there's nothing in here. You know, I was just thinking this is probably just not worth coming here, but that was almost 5,000 credits. Uh. I mean, there's some good stuff here. Ooh, it's a ship. What is that? Some kind of cannon called a dragon, maybe? Uh, this is unlocked elsewhere. All right, my friends. I'm not sure we really found much else of use on this planet. I legit walked around for over an hour. I will probably cut a lot of that out.
All right, we're going to head to Scorpion Sting on a Hyla 2 next. But for now, we're going to call it quits. We're going to wrap this episode up. And I'm going to take a quick break and come back and uh, work on getting to Hyla 2. Hyla is a sandstorm. If you're still with me, I'd love it if you would like and subscribe. Uh, join me on my next adventure. Definitely leave me comments. I love interacting with some of you. Um, hell, I'll love interacting with all of you if, if you want to leave the comments. <laughs> Anyways, you all have a wonderful evening, and I will catch you in our next episode. Thank you. Good night.